Hello everyone, welcome to another episode, episode number 99 this time. And uh, yeah, we will continue explore uh, Terraform and different tools and everything what you guys need to know if you're working with Terraform. Uh, because, well, no matter what kind of uh, license change uh, is happening uh, in, in this world, I believe that Terraform will still exist in one form or another. And uh, well, there will be need for tools uh, uh, to orchestrate your Terraform configurations. And today I'd like to have uh, Soren Martius, uh, who is working as a, a CEO and a founder of uh, Terramate. And we'll be looking into Terramate and what is it, uh, how to use it, and uh, most likely uh, there will be questions from some of you. Uh, if you hear me well, uh, feel free to say hi in chat because I have no clue how many people are watching right now. So welcome everyone and let's start. So let me just uh, share my screen and say a couple things about who am I for those who don't know who am I. So as you can see, this photo here and the photo which you see on your screen is the same one. That's because it's uh, my GitHub page. Uh, I have been working uh, with Terraform for quite a few years and uh, I really enjoy uh, doing a bunch of different things here. Oh my God, so many people saying hi. Wow, I didn't expect uh, to be so many. Oh, and LinkedIn works this time. Great. Hello, Sergey. Hello, David, Yaroslav and Kirillo and Mitro and Philip and Bogdan and Samuel. Oh my God, that's so cool. So uh, we'll have uh, interesting uh, things happening in a bit. Let me just uh, mention a couple of projects which uh, you guys may be uh, interested. Uh, Terraform weekly newsletter uh, is something what I have been writing uh, for almost three years now and uh, weekly.tf is a link, you can go there, leave your email and you will receive newsletter every Wednesday. Uh, also, I maintain uh, several uh, Terraform AWS modules and pre-commit Terraform and a couple other things uh, here and there. Serverless TF is one of uh, my latest edition and there will be more, I'm pretty sure you will hear about them soon. For those who are going to uh, San Francisco, there will be HashiCon uh, October 10 or 11 or 12, uh, around that time. Uh, I will be there as well. And uh, yeah, we can have uh, good things uh, happening there. I'm pretty sure there will be a lot of people, a lot of uh, Terra fans, and we will have a pretty good time. So, um, hello, Peter, and hello, OG Balcon. Great. Okay, so. Uh, that's enough about me. So what is Terramate? Well, uh, instead of me telling you what is Terramate, let's introduce CEO of uh, this company as soon as I figure out which button to click, which is always challenging. This one. Yes. Hello, Soren. You're muted. Hey, Anton. Yes. <laughs> Great. Now we can hear you. Welcome to this live stream. Let's uh, awesome. start. Awesome. Can you tell us? Yeah, a thanks for having me. Words? Yeah, can you tell us a couple of words about uh, uh, what have you been doing with Terraform uh, for a pretty long time? Because I can tell uh, people how I uh, got to know you. <laughs> it was uh, quite a yeah. few years ago when we worked on Terraform modules, and you guys worked on Terraform modules, and I thought, like, why do you do this stuff? And now you do these Terramate things. So yeah. Tell us more about yourself, please. Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me. Um, I appreciate it. So, hi, guys. Nice to meet you. Um, my name is Soren. I'm one of the co-founders of um, Terramate. And, uh, yeah, actually, we've been working in the, in the ISC cloud platform engineering space for quite some time. Um, running a consultancy um, in that space for many years. And, um, yeah, similar to you, we also worked on um, yeah, quite a lot of Terraform modules, more with a focus on on Google Cloud though. So um, I think what we're trying to solve 
with Terramate is basically adding, you know, missing capabilities to to Terraform that um, from our perspective um, back in the days were and are still missing. Um, also in comparison um, while working with other tools such as uh, Terraground, of course, which um, had a big influence on us and, and did many good things for the industry. So basically what we do um, is um, instead of providing um, um, a wrapper, I think um, we call this developer tooling, developer-centric tooling that um, yeah works not only with Terraform, but also with other tools such as um, Polumni, Kubernetes, and, and whatnot. And um, we add a concept of stacks. Um, stacks and Terramate are basically you know, just directories that um, yeah, um, come with a configuration file. And um, um, around stacks, we um, add functionality such as change detection, for example, so to execute commands in you know, specific range um, of stacks based on um, whether or not they contain changes compared to previous commits or, or other branches. Um, Code generation um, is a big part of um, um, of what we do. There are orchestration, so how stacks are or commands and stacks are orchestrated in um, yeah in in, in in a similar fashion. And um, then another concept is um, data sharing. So basically, we have this concept of global here that can be inherited and extended um, on different levels in the the, the hierarchy. Yeah, um, we do this by focusing mostly on Terraform at the moment. Um, but again, I think the main difference here is that if you use Terramate, um, you can basically execute whatever command in the stack. So that makes it um, quite um, quite flexible to an extent that you could basically orchestrate a bunch of tools as well, yeah. Right, well, you actually answered a large amount of questions which I have prepared already, but uh, it's not so simple, guys. If you uh, think that uh, uh, you've been using Terraform and you have some difficulties orchestrating some of your Terraform configurations because uh, things became uh, hard to maintain. Uh, you probably have heard at least uh, about Terraground, right? That's my kind of uh, expectation and that's what I've been using. So I looked at Terramate and while I was preparing for this live stream, I did pretty large amount of research uh, trying to uh, forget what I knew about uh, Terragrant. And I know that these uh, two products are uh, uh, rather competing in uh, in some way. Uh, to my mind, the most competing part between Terragrant and Terramate is that uh, both of these tools want to help developers to be productive with uh, uh, Terraform. As soon as you start to manage more than uh, couple of stacks or folders. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty uh, uh, similar. Uh, can you please uh, highlight some of uh, uh, like maybe a pretty much short sales pitch of uh, uh, Terramate versus uh, Terragrant? Because I I'm 100% sure that large amount of people who watch this already know uh, enough about Terragrant. I have covered Terragrant multiple times on live stream. I delivered a bunch of different talks. I have a lot of projects around this, but what is on your opinion uh, making Terramate uh, interesting for people? Yeah, sure. And um, I think personally, we don't try to compete with Terragrant as much as people may, post, uh, may put post projects in, in comparison. So I think while while Terragrant um, is obviously um, kind of the the the, the most and um, yeah most of the tool in the market when it comes to splitting up your Terraform state kind of into 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 different isolated units, um, you can basically have you know both tools working very seamlessly um, well together with each other. For example, by using Terramate change detection. Um, when you already have um, when you already have a, a setup that um, that runs with term uh, with terraform um, but in general um, I think if you compare both projects next to each other so what we really do is that um, instead of and I and I mentioned it earlier in the call instead of providing a wrapper um, I think the um, the, the, the way that we look at this is that we always want to generate native Terraform code, okay, when you're working in, in a Terraform environment. So 
you can use Terramate, for example, um, to optimize your setup to, you know, break up your infrastructure, infrastructure code into multiple isolated um, unit stacks, um, which again, in, in a Terraform sense, in a Terraform sense would mean um, a state per stack, of course. Um, but then the code that Terraf Terramate returns, right, the code that is produced for you is Terraform native. Right, so it means you can execute it in uh, Terraform Cloud, um, Spacelift, or whatever CI CD provider um, infrastructure delivery management platform of your choice um, you use. Um, plus, we add a few other capabilities that you basically don't find in in Terragram. So, while we think that I think Terragram is a great project, um, personally, um, we just took the learnings that we had. Um, and then we made with with Terra Grant, right? And and sort of built Terra made as a as an next generation tooling, but we don't we don't try to replace it in a sense that okay, if you already adopted um, um, Terra Grant, then uh, you can onboard Terra made to your project, you know, to to add those missing capabilities and basically optimize your setup further. Um, yeah, but we don't really try to um, replace Terra Grant in existing setups. I see. Well, yeah, thanks for uh, clarifying this. Uh, if there are uh, questions uh, by anyone about TerraMate, feel free to uh, write them in chat. And also uh, there is uh, Marius, who is uh, co-founder of TerraMate and uh, CTPO, I guess it is uh, product, uh, uh, product owner, uh, short form for product owner. Uh, feel free to write question and he or we will try to answer uh, questions. Uh, one question uh, which came from uh, Maxim Chernabai, please, please uh, be as short as possible. Does TerraMate affect due to changing license to BCL for Terraform? Yes, um, short version is um, no. Uh, Long version is um, there are some things that we need to change um, um, that came out of the discussion with Harry, uh, Harry Corp, um, which we're basically doing right now. Um, but essentially, um, we do not directly violate um, any license agreement um, with Harry Corp right now or in the future. Yeah. I see. And also, there is uh, one happy user uh, who joined us, Maxim Ataku. Uh, he said that uh, they're using TerraMate to identify changes in Terraform monorepo with multiple projects and modules inside to generate Atlantis YAML. Uh, well, that's because uh, Terraform does not do this for us. Uh, there is also a utility which is called Atlantis config something, uh, which does this thing already. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, he's also saying that uh, thank you for such a great tool. Well, let's actually take a look into what kind of tool Maxim is talking about. Should we? Let's do this. Okay, so uh, let me add you uh, here. Yeah, good. Okay, so uh, what I want to, uh, to show here so first of all, uh, there is folder called TerraMate Serverless Demo, uh, which I will be looking into. Uh, the code in this folder uh, is pretty simplified just to highlight uh, a couple of things which uh, I want to focus on. Uh, and we will go in any direction um, as, as necessary. Um, uh, I have been following Quick Start Guide uh, myself. I thought like, okay, what can possibly go wrong if I start using TerraMate without giving it any uh, Git repository? And it failed. Uh, it really has a built-in uh, relation or uh, assumption that whatever I do is inside of Git. I can, I can mimic it, I can make a fake repository, I can uh, emulate it, uh, but out of the box it was uh, it had pretty good uh, connection or it had pretty strong assumption that whatever I do will be versioned. At some point, it will be necessary to track changes, to, uh, to make sure that uh, there are no uncommitted changes and so on. 
so if you start using TerraMate uh, on 3D Greenfield project, uh, you will have to make sure that you use uh, Git and you can specify different branches. Uh, also, I'm so old fashioned that I still use master branch and I will not change it to main no matter what people say. And it also <laughs> was uh, making me some difficulties. Anyway, um, I, I really like the idea that uh, uh, infrastructure as code has uh, assumption that it will be tracked. Uh, so I, I was really happy to actually to see that TerraMate uh, took um, uh, this very seriously. And uh, I, I read in your design uh, principles, which you published uh, a couple of years ago in the blog post, that uh, uh, Git is the right tool uh, for us to see changes between versions, between branches, and so on. So I really like this uh, uh, point. So uh, the configuration files here are pretty straightforward. They're well documented. We don't have to look into them. Uh, I just uh, specified a couple of configs in TerraMate TMHCL. TM.HCL is necessary uh, for us to have um, uh, to have this file picked up uh, by TerraMate. So then let's look into uh, files inside of stacks. So I have created this uh, stacks using uh, TerraMate CLI command. Uh, a couple of things which I want to mention is, uh, well, there are a bunch of uh, TMHCL files. Uh, we can group them the way we want. Uh, as far as I understand, there is no enforcement from the tool. Uh, how we call this file, uh, where we put them. Uh, I mean, we can split them in many files. We can put it into one file if we want. For obvious reasons, it makes sense to split them uh, at least to some degree. Uh, uh, the thing which is uh, really highly, uh, how to say, uh, used, sometimes I would say even misused to my mind, I will explain it why, is uh, generate HCL uh, block. Uh, so as you mentioned earlier, is uh, the, that um, uh, TerraMate is uh, a tool which uh, generates uh, Terraform code like as native as it can. So that's why there are a lot of uh, generate HCL blocks in typical projects. We need to generate different files from different uh, with different content and so on. So uh, uh, generate HCL. We specify what file we want to use and uh, in which condition do we want to use. Sometimes we want to generate it always. Sometimes only if certain criteria was met. Uh, so question number one: Why do you guys prefix standard functions from Terraform? with TM and pretty much all functions which you have uh, are prefixed. <coughs> yeah, because it's a limitation in um, the HCL library provided by um, by HashiCorp. So in order to um, interpolate globals here um, in those functions, we actually needed to um, yeah we actually needed to prefix and wrap them in a TerraMate specific way. So if you'd use the if you'd use the Terraform native functions, um, they would not interpolate uh, Terraformic globals. Mm. Well, uh, I thought uh, TerraGrant does it uh, without TM or TG or whatever. So TerraGrant uh, reuse these functions because they are implemented in Terraform library itself. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. Um... I'm not entirely sure how that works in uh, Telegram. To be honest, it's been some time since I worked with it. Um, yeah. But uh, um, so there, there, there are two points. Yeah, a um, we sometimes want to generate code that includes, um, of course, normal Terraform functions, right? But b if we evaluate globals in generated code, then it needs to um, um, sort of happen on another level, right? In the hierarchy, of course. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, and talking about uh, uh, different extra uh, variables or extra scopes uh, which TerraMate has, uh, there are not many extra things added. I mean, there are, of course, uh, globals like TerraMate, 
uh, which is extremely handy and I found it extremely useful to run commands like uh, uh, Terramate experimental metadata which can show me all available metadata for my uh, stacks. I found this extremely useful to understand uh, what kind of uh, things I actually have. So that's really cool. Uh, Terragram does not have this so much, but yeah, there are some things. Another comment which I found also useful is uh, Terramate experimental run and env. Uh, currently it is off, but if I if I have it here, then I can see what kind of environment variables uh, were specified or were used or will be used in each specific stack. Uh, I guess this is handy to treat secrets, right? I mean, this. It, yeah, you could, you could use it. Yeah, you could use it for secrets or um, all kinds of configuration values that you, um, that you want to inject, yeah. Mm. Right. Okay, so uh, looking into this couple configuration files, what's happening here is that as soon as I have this uh, DMHCL file and then I run uh, generate, terramate generate command, it says nothing to do because I have already run this code. And if I go into, uh, let's say, dev stack, uh, I will see a bunch of different TF files uh, added here. I have configured uh, it to be this way, so I will just explain what exactly is happening here. Let's start with a simple providers um, TMHCL, as I show here. So the first thing here is uh, that uh, Terramate uh, process this template and replace everything what it knows, uh, and it's uh, pretty much visible right away. Uh, I like this. Uh, no problem, right? I mean, you can see some configurations here and everything looks good. While if I look into other files, if I look into, let's say, um, main TF, I can see things a little bit different. I can see that, uh, uh, no, sorry, not main TF. Uh, where is it? Uh, is it main TF? Right, so, sorry, yes. Uh, if I look into dev stack, I will find two files which I added here. One is uh, configuration for stack. Again, it can be named any anyhow I want, but I just specify that this is dev stack uh, with some description and this ID was given to me when I created it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but if I specify uh, any other ID, for example, I will call it dev, I don't know, one, two, three, and uh, then if I want to move this folder somewhere differently, uh, uh, Terramate will understand and will allow me to do this refactoring by moving folders the way I want, right? So this ID is really uh, the identificator of this stack in all of my uh, uh, repository, right? So. ID can be any any string basically, and it's going to be generated for you if you create a stack um, um, with um, the Terramate create command, which basically essentially just yeah creates a new stack. Um, there's I think no purpose of renaming the ID. I mean, it's a new UID, of course, um, that um, we see quite often be used, for example, for um, um, yeah when when users um, reference it, for example, things such as the state pass, yeah. Um, which then, um, and I think that's that's a good comparison to Terra Grant is um, if you do it in that way, of course you can move the stack up and down the um, and the directory tree, uh, the hierarchy. And what's great here also is there's um, a command um, Terramate experimental clone, which basically allows you to clone um, 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 a specific stack yeah, to another location, which will then automatically um, also replace the stack ID with you. And of uh, for you, and also of course regenerate the code for or generate the code for this uh, clone stack. Yeah. So let's assume you have a Kubernetes cluster or so uh, inside the stack, and um, for um, and use the stack ID in in very in various references, which is a common pattern to um, to use the Terramate. So if you clone that stack, right, this reference would be also updated for you in place. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, 
also uh, one of the use case I think uh, can be that uh, if I have a lot of subfolders and I want to do some uh, refactoring by moving folders around somehow, as soon as I keep this ID the same, uh, Terramate uh, will do its best to preserve this state uh, in the right place, right? Because it, yeah, it, it, that, that's that, that's correct. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's it's not really a TerraMate specific feature. That's that's that, that's that's rather an internal of how the state works, right? Um, but if you if you um, if you keep the UUID in place or whatever identifier, of course, you use for the stack ID, um, then the operation um, is not destructive. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, because uh, I, I know that in TerraGrant, it often can be quite a challenge that. Uh, you have your Terraform state match. Um, so the location of Terraform state file match the path uh, of the module you are using. So if you Correct. move things around, then you will have to move your Terraform state file as well. Correct, yeah. Right, uh, I mentioned, uh, and I run a couple comments here, uh, experimental. Uh, run MV to list environment variables. And I also find uh, uh, pretty much all of these experimental call uh, commands extremely useful. And I hope one day uh, they will not be experimental, but uh, actually uh, available uh, for everyone. Um, I'd like to, uh, let, let, let's move on with this, uh, with expo exploration of DevStack. So uh, I specified name and ID and tags. Actually tags, uh, for some reasons, uh, is a list, not map, which is a bit surprising to me. I get used to tags being map, uh, like this one, uh, pretty much everywhere. But here, it's more like a label. Uh, it's just my observation. And uh, then, uh, well, what kind of things I can do in stack. Of course, I can put some Terraform files and I can make resources available here. So to do this, I just need to put some, uh, some TF and I can put whatever I want here, right? Random ID and that's it. So I will have 10 bytes of random ID somewhere created, but this is pretty boring, right? Uh, you cannot reuse it in different other stacks so easily. Uh, well, that's why we have modules, right? The concept is very well known for everyone who's using Terraform. So let's look into how to use modules. And uh, well, this was a bit surprising to me. So first of all, uh, um, let's start with this one. So uh, inside of stack where I need to do, where I need to, uh, use this module. I use blocks like import and I specify which files or which file I need to import. Uh, I don't know why, but I could not specify something like star. Uh, so I, is it by design or is it bug? Do you know? So glob, glob imports, um, I believe, are supported with star star, not star. So like I install Glob imports. Um, yeah, but I'm not sure if that's released in the version that you're using or not because we just recently released that. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I imported a couple files here from this local module, which is located in S3 bucket. Hello, Eduardo from Argentina. Wow, that's pretty long way. Uh, so I import a couple files from the modules. And as you can see, uh, my model, I'm not showing the source code yet, but it, it's already uh, main uh, uh, TMHCL and outputs TMHCL. So, okay, I need to look into these files, right? And this is where most of my surprises came from. Well, I will explain what exactly surprised me most here, but uh, the code which is happening here, uh, it says, uh, generate main TF file with this source code uh, in it. Fine. As soon as I'm mentioning something what is not yet known to Terraform, 
uh, I need to use this generate HCL file. And I say that uh, bucket name will come from global bucket. So global is uh, the map which is configured on each uh, uh, stack uh, or per each stack. So inside of each stack, there is global section and uh, I have bucket here and similar uh, block inside of other stacks in prod, for example. So fine, I can write this code. Um, well, then if I look inside of outputs, what I have here is output block. So, and here is uh, one thing which uh, I still cannot understand. Uh, why is this happening this way? So instead of us, mm, like I'm putting myself into uh, Terragrant fan now, okay? In Terragrant, we don't uh, check out, uh, no, so in Terragrant, we check out the source code of the module and then we go into this uh, directory where it was checked out and we run Terraform there. Uh, while Terramate, I understand that you guys want to uh, generate real Terraform code. That's why my stacks dev folder is already looking like a real Terraform code because there are already files for my Terraform. So everything will be working uh, right away. But what surprised me most is that uh, uh, I still need to write this module block. And what's even worse in this case is that I will have to repeat outputs as well as variables if I want to send them back and forth or configure them. Uh, can you maybe elaborate on the design principle, why this is implemented this way? Yeah, sure. And um, I'm not I'm not quite sure um, whether or not I agree with the um, with the use case here. I mean, um, there is I, I think in particularly I see no reason here to generate module code with the generate HTL statement. You could just use native HTL inside your stack, right, or native Terraform inside your stack. Um, the reason when you would typically use generate HGL is if you would like to apply a lot of conditions. Yeah. So what would be a module or modules that we use at, um, at Terramate or that we've seen used by the community, for example, a module that generates different codes based on the provider version. Yeah? Let's assume you use a provider version of AWS that is slightly outdated. It doesn't support um, um, some attributes yeah, that, is, uh, that are available in newer versions. You typically want to generate code that doesn't come with those attributes, right? Versus if you use a newer version, then you may want to an, entirely um, yeah, um, generate an, an entirely different structure. However, um, the way that I feel about this here is, and I and I, I get your feedback, but I think the use case may not be the you know may not may not be the best because instead of generating the yeah the module code here, um, you could basically just use native um, 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 native Terraform inside of Stacks, right? Um, no, typically, I'm, I'm pointing yeah. to this global bucket, so that's why yeah. I, I have to generate it. Aha, okay, right. so the. And what's the question in that case? Well, the question is probably already repeated by Sergio, who is saying that it means that you need to, uh, that it needs to write your custom modules code to add those to, what? Well, no, I, I, uh, I forget, forget about, uh, uh, that question, uh, I guess uh, he meant something different. Uh, what I wanted to say is that uh, instead of us uh, wrapping this module, uh, mm -hmm. it would be more uh, efficient uh, to not repeat ourselves and just uh, specify uh, all of these properties here. Like, it, of course, I can write this code uh, without. It. So let's say if I put it in uh, let's say into default.tf, just as a name. Of course, I can put something like this and I can put var uh, bucket, right? 
Right. Uh, so then I need to somehow define this bucket. Um, somehow I need to specify value for this bucket uh, or I need to use local. Well, but this is already happening. I mean, I can write uh, Terraform already for that. Uh, I thought the question which, uh, which uh, uh, Sergio uh, wrote uh, or meant, uh, why do we need to even write this module block if we wrap one module here? So we make our local module, which is modules S3 bucket, which wraps uh, external module. So my idea, uh, or when I looked into this for the very first time, was that I can write something like uh, like this. Mm -hmm. uh, forget about all of this. I don't want to have my local modules at all. So something like this, and then uh, inputs, just as a name, can be uh, all of my inputs, which I want. So this is going to be my bucket, this is going to be my ACL, and so on. And if you look into this one, you will understand that this is already what Terragram does. Terragram mm -hmm. will not do anything, uh, will not wrap your module on top of uh, anything else. It will just check it out uh, using Terraform uh, get command uh, or what was it, Terraform, Terraform, what was the name of this command, get? Well, it doesn't matter, but anyway, uh, it will, uh, maybe init, Terraform init, help, um, yeah, it will run this command, it will copy the contents of a given module into target directory before initialization. So that's uh, that's it. So this way would eliminate me. Uh, first of all, I don't have to wrap uh, external module with another module, which automatically means that I can do refactoring quite easily. And also, I don't need to import uh, this module, define outputs, variables, whatever. So this was my uh, idea that I will have something like this. But then, in all examples I found, uh, there was a need to generate HCL uh, and write something here. This is just a, a duplication of efforts to me. So that was, uh, mm, yeah, a, a bit surprising. And I thought, yeah, um, but then in, um, I think in Terraground you then stuck with a, um, with a single module per stack, yeah? Um, um, and I mean, the, so the point that you're making here is that you find yourself writing code duplication by using, um, a different approach. I mean, by using the generate HCL and content blocks compared to by just sourcing in the modules and, and, um, and setting these inputs. Um, I guess, I guess, I guess that's your, yeah, I guess that's your statement here. Um, yeah. Interesting. Haven't thought about well, this, to be honest. Um, I can. What I can do here is that if I look into default uh, TF file, and uh, this is the code which I write. Okay. Also for tags, it should be uh, another variable, right? So I specified a couple of variables, and I call this module. That's essentially what uh, TerraMate is doing for me. Uh, the question is why I should be generating this code if I don't use um, uh, globals. Uh, ov overall, why I am wrapping anything what is uh, already existing into a module. I just want to use it. I don't want to wrap on top of wrap and so on. Especially if this is only a module which I'm using. You're right that Terragram does not support out of the box uh, invocation of uh, multiple modules. Uh, that's why uh, we need to do extra effort by making our uh, custom modules and connect these uh, smaller modules together. 
but in general uh, i don't find this approach uh, here uh, with uh, required local modules uh, as simple to work with uh, as in Terraform. the second point yeah. here yeah. which was which was a bit surprising to me is that I thought like, okay, let me take a look into what kind of code was generated. And uh, I see that uh, this is very simple example. So I looked into main TF and uh, I was a bit surprised to see this code uh, ordering uh, arguments in different order because that's how HCL writer works, right? It just, uh, uh, yeah, just uh, order it. So that's uh, not really uh, keeping um, keeping the structure as I was writing it here, because here I I may include some comments, I may group things differently, and I'd like to keep this exactly as is because it says content. You know, it's not uh, it's not like unordered uh, list of uh, values. Uh, so it was a bit uh, hard for me to debug here, but uh, eventually, of course, uh, we don't need to look into generated uh, code so often, so we can disregard this one. So, uh, yeah, overall, the approach with uh, this module reference of single modules is something what I'd like to have improved, as I said, uh, with introduction of uh, single source import and providing list of inputs uh, to the module um, then it would eliminate the need of having modules locally at all and then we can uh, be one step closer to uh, to teragrant's way of handling uh, single module stacks oh there are so many comments from people Let's take a look into some of them. Uh, right, so, oh wow, there are so many questions. Sorry that I missed uh, so many questions. Mm, so, Sergio says, I have a lot of custom Terraform modules already written. If I want to invoke those modules from Terramate, should I add those Terramate lines in every module code? I guess, uh, Sergio meant uh, these lines, right? No, you don't have to add these lines. Uh, this line will be added for you. Uh, you will have to make local uh, module where you write code like this one. But uh, this kind of code you already have anyway, right? So I guess this was this was it. Mm. All right. So, and Maxim is saying uh, generate is useful, especially with conditionals. Um, ah, sorry, that was. In the rest of cases, you can just create a regular Terraform file and insert your code there along with generated files. Pretty much the same what we can do with Terraform. That's how we extend Teragrant with Teragrant modules uh, right now. So you can combine your Terraform uh, files with Teragrant. Okay. And I think it is alphabetical order. Uh, yeah, alphabetical order for, uh, for attributes specified inside of module is a bit surprising, but not a big deal, I understand. Also, HCL writer doesn't know anything about comments, so it will be hard for you to uh, to write these comments back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can now either use plain Terraform and enhance them with global. You export as locals, or you generate dynamic generated module code you use. Yeah, let's take a look into how to pass variables between different stack in a bit. Um, okay. You don't need to wrap everything. As far as I know, Terramate is not replacement for Terraform, but a companion. Yeah, sure it is. I mean, it, it is a companion. 
it's not a replacement. Uh, use TerraMate for those blocks that are repeatable across stacks and have a slight change on variables only. Uh, well, if there is only change in variables, then I will just specify different values in different stacks. Mm. Oh yeah, that's a that's a big one. Is TerraMate just like AWS CDK with stacks? What do you think, Soren? Probably not, no. <clears throat> Yes, uh, no, it's probably, I mean, of course we can say that it can be, but it's, yeah, it's pretty, pretty hard to do it. Uh, TerraMate can generate um, Terraform code um, natively, but uh, yeah, CDK should generate uh, CloudFormation uh, in order to work. Right. Okay, so let's take a look into uh, other thing. Let, let me roll back this change a bit. Um, I don't need this uh, default TF file. Mm, I will put my import file back. Okay. Uh, and one more question or clarification by Maxim. Thank you very much, Maxim, for being so active today, by the way. As far as I know, Terragrant cannot identify overall changes in stacks if you did a change in a module, which is used by multiple stacks, but not in a stack itself. Uh, that's true, because uh, by design, uh, Terragrant does not uh, track anything in git or in any other uh, in any other way uh, though there are some utilities uh, I forgot their names right now but these utilities uh, help you to watch for such changes uh, I forgot the name honestly but uh, it's inside of my uh, github stars uh, and I mentioned it in weekly TF a couple months ago uh, so yeah, it is a hack, and uh, yeah, it, it's pretty ugly hack. Uh, this is one of the things which I really like in uh, TerraMate, by the way, is that when I specify uh, stack details, I can specify a bunch of different words like uh, bonds, uh, and I can specify a list of uh, IDs uh, or list of uh, names of stacks I. I want to have, or like dependence, right? Maybe once is not uh, the best uh, example. So those are, so those are paths, right? So you can you can use once, after, and before to basically um, to basically customize the default orchestration. The default orchestration um, um, mm -hmm. of execution is hierarchically, and here you can either um, set stacks explicitly or directories that contain stacks. Yeah. Yeah. So here, if I specified uh, something like this, then it means prod should be uh, applied before uh, that, right? Correct. And what what is want? Does it mean that it has to be uh, dependent or? Yes, it, 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 so what once does, it explicitly sets a dependency um, to this specific stack, means if you want, if this, if the current stack is executed, the other stack also needs to be executed. Oh, I see. Right, so once, before, and after, uh, these two. Uh, yeah. And this also, this also supports text, by the way, right? So you can also set, um, um, so, first once will be forced execution of a desired stack and then um, in, in, in after before you can also use text instead of um, paths yeah. or list of paths, right? Yeah, right. So once here and prod is the same. Exactly. And the typical use case for once is that, um, so let's say, let's say you use a TerraMate orchestration, um, you invoke TerraMate run minus minus change, right? 
that would typically trigger um, um, commands in all in all stacks that contain changes or with uh, text in, in all the stacks that contain specific stacks. So what you now do with once is you always execute the specific stack, even though it does not contain any changes. Mm. All right, yeah. Well, uh, Umka is saying that uh, stack sets for Terraform is a long wanted feature. I need to look deeper in that. We needed alternative to AWS uh, CloudFormation stacks written in Terraform. Well, it's funny, but you are, I think, uh, at least second or even third person who mentioned this uh, during the last couple of days. Really, I don't know where you guys are coming from, but uh, I have heard exactly this uh, question on LinkedIn uh, by one of my uh, peer. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, and uh, one basic question from Rahil, if TerraMate can generate code of infrastructure, will that be on resource level or module level specifically? Um, can be done on both levels. That's entirely up to you. <clears throat> so the way the way this is done the way this is done usually is that um, you use the code generation to conditionally create code in stacks. Um, the most likely use case that we see, um, it's a little bit unfortunate that we focused so much on the code generation because Terminate has so much more to offer that we didn't even mention in this call, um, which directly correlates to the code generation though. So um, the most common use case that you see is that say provider and backend configuration um, is something that you generate for every stack, right? But then you can also use um, um, native um, Terraform files and modules inside those stacks to, for example, use Anton's modules um, right away without globals, um, without um, evaluating any Terramate specifics, of course. Um, but then it highly depends. It highly depends on your design. Um, we see people using, um, um, yeah, generating whole modules um, um, with Terramate that, again, based on the provider version, render a different version of those modules, um, highly depends. Right. Yeah. And uh, uh, I don't know who is this LinkedIn user, but I guess uh, uh, it's your colleague. Yeah. It just doesn't Could show. be. Yeah. It just doesn't show uh, the name. So I don't know. Uh, but yeah, you can definitely generate pretty much anything. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, okay. Uh, let's move on. Oh, well, there are more questions. Uh, all right. I mean, the one, the one thing that I wanted to mention, um, before we move on is maybe that, you know, the, 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 we try with the, with the code generation, we really try to overcome the shortcomings, um, um, of Terraform here. And I think that was just, it was just seen in the, um, in the, in the comments here as well, for example, dynamically, um, setting a version of a specific module, right? So now if you use global globals. And let's say you have a thousand stacks, 500 in there, 500 in production. If you want to canary release a new version of your Kubernetes, of your EKS model, right? You can just do this by um, updating um, a global because the way globals work is they are inherited throughout the hierarchy, right? So if I set this on the root level, I can override, extend, and inherit this on a different level. Yeah? So let's say everything in dev should have a specific model version set and everything in production another one, right? Or I just go into one specific set, stack and I override it there. And that's something that's just pretty neat together with the um, with the code generation feature. Yeah, yeah uh, but also at the same time, uh, very often we don't want to have this feature uh, because uh, if I specified let's say that Terraform, uh, like in this case, Terraform AWS provider version uh, 5.13, uh, well, I don't want to have this version in dev and in prod and in all stacks right away. Uh, most likely, I will still have some very ancient stack somewhere which uh, is still using Terraform AWS provider version 3 because, uh, well, this resource is just not supported there. And similar case or similar problem I envision if we specify, uh, if we, let's say, make this version parameterized, it's not enough. For example, if I specified version two, I don't know what was in version two, but for example, in version two, there was no uh, block like this. So these arguments will just uh, incorrect. 
And if I now use this version, so let's say instead of 200, I will source it from my global Terraform uh, AWS modules uh, version. Uh, and if user specified version 2, then these blocks should not be there. That's yeah. correct. I mean, that's that's one of the use cases that I tried to explain um, to you early in this call. You can generate, you can dynamically generate attribute code um, based on a global version set, and the um, so that's what I mean by you know providing different versions of models depending on yeah. um, on on provider settings. And the second thing is um, what you said um, before you dived into this. Um, so the the globals, of course, um, you don't always want to update. Um, let's say a specific version of a module to the newest version or so. Hence the point that modules are inherited and extendable um, in the, in the um, hierarchy. Yeah? So let's say um, you go into dev first, you can overwrite this specific, you know, Terraform version or module version then it will be inherited for all stacks, right? But if you only want to roll it out to a granular set of stacks inside of your dev directory, you can also just set it in there or overwrite it even once again, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and well, this way of, of, of hierarchically declaring data that is extendable and, and, and heritable um, is, is something that, um, as far as I know, um, does not exist with other toolings or so, which quite often leads to, yeah, also duplication of um, data definition, et cetera. It's something mm -hmm. where I feel we sort of quite neatly in, in Terramate, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, there are a bunch of different uh, other questions, and I'm glad that uh, your colleague is answering them uh, in pretty speedy fashion. Uh, uh, clarification from Rahil is that the reason I asked is we sometimes uh, want to create resources and use depends on tags. So if we want to generate depends on through TerraMate, could we do it, or we just need to manually add that in code after generated? I guess uh, it is uh, related to the mm, to the way how to export globals as locals, right? Uh, Probably, yeah, and you, and you can totally do that. And just to um, and just to answer the question, actually. Um, actually, you should not add anything to the um, already generated code because what TerraMate generate does is it makes sure that the file um, that is generated by, Terra, by TerraMate always matches the expected format. Um, so it's out of sync, right? It was just overwrite whatever, whatever changes you add there. Um, hence, typically, um, um, either you generate uh, files, um, and again, you can generate whatever file, whatever files here naming wise, um, or you mix them with even a manually managed code. Um, and also the way, um, just for the, uh, just to explain this also .tm, .htl, .htl files work very similarly to what you find in Terraform. They all get by evaluation at evaluation runtime, they just get merged into a single, um, single file. Yeah. Mm. Right. Uh, I really like, uh, when people, especially recently start to, uh, uh, question if HashiCorp decide to add some functionality which you guys have, how will it affect uh, the future of TerraMate? And Bogdan is asking, at some point, uh, Terraform will have code generation. I think it is already, I don't know, maybe in alpha, beta, or somehow there is work in progress, uh, at least for, um, for imports, you can add code, um, maybe some other functionality will be added as well. So, but how will it affect uh, TerraMate? Do you have any prediction? Yeah. Yeah, and I'd, I'd, I'd love to see, I'd love to see Terraform adding more of this um, um, natively. I mean, of course, uh, the whole point of TerraMate CLI, I mean, we're also building a commercial product, which should not be the, the point of this call, but the whole point of us inventing TerraMate CLI is to get rid of the shortcomings of Terraform. Uh, so if, um, for example, um, we see that they implement um, functionality uh, natively 
uh, and back to Terraform. I'd very much like to see this and encourage them. This will not um, impact the, the, the future development um, of, of Terramate, though. I mean, in the long run, um, what we really try to try to produce multi-ISC management as well, right? We don't market it um, um, like this as of now. But for example, many people use Terramate already to generate code for Kubernetes manifest with YAML by using globals, uh, using the same globals in the, and generated YAMLs and generated um, in Terraform and whatnot. Right. Uh, well, one more thing uh, related to module vendoring. Experimental vendor downloads. Is this something what we talked about so that instead of writing a local module which wraps existing module, is this kind of feature which you guys are developing uh, which will allow us to download Terraform module, store it locally, uh, or maybe somehow uh, prevent us or avoid us from writing a wrapper on top of it? Or is it totally a different thing? So no, that, this is basically vendoring, like you find it in normal programming languages. So basically downloading dependencies that you may want to check in um, to the, to the <coughs> sorry, to the upstream, right? Um, it has nothing to do with um, getting rid of the um, of the wrapping code, yeah. Okay. Right. Then let's move on to um, to the way how we can pass different uh, variables and where we can pass them from. So specifically, it is uh, uh, setting and exporting globals as locals. Uh, and again, this is something what I find a little bit controversial. Uh, I'm not sure that I agree or disagree even with this feature comparing to the use case, uh, how I saw it uh, being used in Telegram. So what, what exactly I'm saying here is that uh, in this specific uh, file, which is uh, just another generate HCL file, uh, I'm generating file with, with uh, content, uh, with the content, which is uh, locals and bucket name of this uh, variable is dependent on something. So it's going to take uh, Terramate stack pass absolute and it will uh, get name of this uh, value, which is in this case, it's dev or prot. So depending on which uh, locals I'm looking into, it will be bucket called uh, my bucket in dev or in prod, it will be called my bucket in prod. Very simple thing. Uh, what is uh, happening here? Uh, so once this uh, underscore locals file is generated, uh, we have standard uh, locals block, which is known by Terraform. Then what we can do is that instead of, uh, inside of the module, instead of pointing to global bucket, which was defined uh, on the very high level in config, no, not in config, in uh, stack, instead of using this bucket, which was global, we'll be using something what is more dynamic. So to do that, we just need to replace bucket. And again, this piece of code is exactly uh, how it would be written in Terraform. So if we use just this piece of code, we don't need to use even uh, uh, Terramate. So it can be plain main.tf where the content is just like this because we are not pointing to global. So uh, that's pretty much it, right? Now the controversial part, or let's add, let's run some code, right? I think it's pretty cool if we can run it, uh, because of course it will complain uh, something is not right. It says uh, outdated code found, and I need to run uh, generate command. That's because I touched a uh, few files just double check that uh, the code is is okay. I don't need this guy here. Okay, so if I now run generate command, it tells me this is extremely useful feature. I like it so much. First of all, I like it because it's very quick. 
and second that it actually does something uh, it says that it's gonna to delete uh, main no it's gonna to uh, update uh, main tier it just added something and yes of course it added this local bucket so now when I run terraform init it run uh, this comment in all stacks so the feedback which I uh, have heard well and uh, I'm struggling with this myself from time to time by writing different wrappers of on top of terraform uh, logs and telegram logs as well uh, I have no clue which folder was it executed at. is there is a way for me to at least see which stack is it is this piece of code for dev or for prod any ways to look into this? Um, let me check this quickly. Um, I think so. Just looking at, um, I think if you add verbose, ah, no, log level info. Yeah, if you add log, so per default, and I think it's configurable as well, um per default no but if you add um, um minus minus log minus level um info then it will show you more of a both output uh, log fmt info or what no log level so if you if you run the same command and you append the argument log level mm. equals mm. yeah exactly yeah um but log fmt Shouldn't be there. Mm. Let's see. All right, okay, now it's better. Now at least I can see this information. And I really like that I can, uh, what was it? Log FMT JSON, ah, oh, right, log FMT. So if I combine this with log FMT JSON, it's actually uh, almost, almost useful. I mean, it's not useful because uh, it's producing invalid JSON, but uh, still, it's almost useful. Mm. Uh, okay, so uh, going back to this uh, bucket uh, and the way it was uh, specified, uh, what is uh, the, uh, the way how these locals are implemented? Again, TerraMate is not doing anything else than uh, generating uh, Terraform code and then Terraform is executed natively, right? So my dev stack uh, already has uh, reference locals bucket and this name is extremely static. There is no way for me to execute it in uh, runtime or do anything um, Mm, anything dynamic in comparison how this is implemented in terraform or in teragram sorry uh, teragram allows us to specify uh, dependencies which will be fetched uh, by let's say by running terraform output in specific stack um, maybe that's not uh, exact comparison but uh, i'm wondering what are the ways to have more dynamic uh, reference here? So, for example, uh, is there is a way for me to specify that uh, this bucket name uh, should be uh, should be not local, but it should be, let's say, uh, output of uh, uh, I don't know, random path resource. Is there is a way to do this or even more powerful way would be uh, AWS region so I want to see uh, my bucket something like this AWS region current name bucket so I want to have my bucket to be called like this is there is a way without uh, 
add in too much code around here. I mean, I mean, you would obviously need to, I mean, that, that will work. That will evaluate. You would obviously need to add the data source as well. Right. Yeah. So of course, if I write a bunch of Terraform code, it will work. Uh, but, uh, I'm, I'm just trying to come up with a case where this value is coming from another stack. How can I do this? So what I want, right. Is okay. It has to be something like stack. I'm just writing prod and then outputs, I don't know, name, for example, something like this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. So what you, what you're referring to is how to share data um, among stacks and how to share data that is um, being owned from one stack um, to another. And I think the common pattern here. Um, as you said already in tools such as uh, Terragrant is by using outputs, right? Um, the way why we don't, the reason why we don't do this, um, um, there's several, basically that creates hard contracts, hard dependencies among stacks, but also outputs may be stale, right? Um, <coughs> they persisted, um, they persisted in the, um, in, in the state after all. So there are different ways of um, addressing this in Terramate. Typically, what we use in all of our projects, um, instead of using outputs, we use, um, um, of course, remo um, um, uh, data sources. Uh, um, similarly to what you suggested here in this example already, because data sources then actually fetch data um, at runtime by looking at the APIs and the data may not be stale, right? Um, or, if, for example, if a data source um, uh, does not exist, um, you can, of course, always do a remote state um, um, lookup, which I usually don't prefer doing. Uh, data sources would be the preferred at all times if the um, data flow is top down um, in a one directional manner, then it would be global. So. Well, one thing with uh, data sources, which is, uh, uh, like you mentioned, it's executed uh, at the very beginning. And if I have uh, my stack, uh, which is uh, uh, changing this data source, uh, like uh, uh, it will be executed uh, at the very beginning, then the data will be changed and then I will have old data. Uh, this can happen, especially in old versions of Terraform, it was so big problem that people wrote uh, some wrappers, some uh, uh, depends on statement just to make sure that you actually get up to date information uh, when you need it. Uh, yeah, but same, that, same is true for same is true for outputs, no? <laughs> um, uh, with outputs, uh, you specify. Uh, well, with outputs, uh, it's not such a big problem because uh, uh, Terra Terra Grant will run uh, Terraform output uh, anyway at the very beginning if you need this value inside of your argument. So in Terragrant, yes, it will be a surprise if you run, let's say, run all commands and you change a bunch of things in parallel. Then yes, of course, there will be a bunch of different uh, problems. But normally, if you change it in one place and you use it in another place, uh, it's not such a big deal. And you can also specify what scope you want to run, uh, and what kind of things you want to uh, to limit it. Uh, but okay, let's uh, think about, uh, or can you uh, maybe mention uh, how I can get an output uh, of my production stack into this? Um, any ideas how to get uh, production, production. So since the since since yeah, since stacks don't know about um, outputs, I mean they simply do not care. You cannot just reference the output of um, a stack. Yeah, that that concept just doesn't exist. You could, for example, uh, reference the output of a of a module, of course. Yeah, but if you want to reference data that is managed by another stack then the only way of doing this is by either defining the data as a global on a higher level, which is then be inherited throughout all stacks, of course, 
or if it's data that um, is resource specific, then you would need to query it with a with a data source. Yeah. So you can't just you can't just um, do similar. There's no similar. There's no similarity such as in Terragram where you say, "Hey, please give me the output of module ABC because the stack is not a module, right? Stack doesn't even care about the state." Right, the stack doesn't even need to provide a, a, a definition or so. That can be of type uh, a Kubernetes can have a Kubernetes manifest inside of Terraform code or whatnot. So naturally, we cannot just um, um, reference data from um, from another stack. Um, but again, what you can do is, <coughs> sorry, what you can do is um, basically use data sources, um, and filters, um, 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 and generate those filters even with the code generation. Yeah. Right, so uh, then the question where I should be generating it, because uh, inside of my module, uh, eventually, uh, I mean, my module does not know uh, anything about stacks. It's going to be sit inside. So I need to put something like var bucket. So, right. So this value uh, will have to be defined somewhere. And uh, mm -hmm. I would expect it to be inside of stack somewhere. I don't know where exactly, uh, but here I would say something like values uh, and what was the name of it? Bucket, bucket. And then this bucket value should come from this stack. I don't know how to point it, but uh, let's say from prod, it should be name. Something like this. Of course, syntax is wrong, but the point here is that, uh, again, by the time when I run this code, uh, uh, TerraMate should be able to go to this folder and pretty much expecting the same behavior as TerraGrant does. Go into this folder, uh, running, running Terraform, output name raw that's it and it would get this value for me here and put it here mm -hmm. i mean we are not trying again we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here on how uh Terragram does things um and i also think the tool is in uh, in a slightly um in a slightly different space i'm i'm aware I understand that this is how this this is how you used to it, but we're trying to you know overthink those concepts um, in a way that they're a little bit more sustainable. I'd say, at least from our perspective, or for based on what we see on how the community is using this. So, um, for us, um, and there's been many questions and discussions in the in, in the community um, around this, but I think in general um, there is common sense that. Um, you know, as of now, um, we may add this in the future. There's no way of referencing data directly as outputs from another stack. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, uh, I understand uh, that this was not implemented because it's against uh, uh, Terraform. Actually, uh, uh, when was it? I think it was about August 2018 when I was uh, in this. Uh, Kind of, it was before Terragrant added uh, support for dependency blocks. And the way how I was solving this issue is that in places where I need to specify something like this one, uh, I was writing, so the way I was handling it, uh, I made project which is called TFWARS annotations. This is like shameless plug. I dec de uh, deprecated that project long time ago, but what I was doing is that when people wanted to have some value, what I expected them to to write was some sort of annotation, uh, which was uh, like TF wars, something like this, and then here I was specifying where to get this uh, value from. So it was like stack, uh, let's say prod. And then name of uh, the output was uh, like name, something like this. 
And uh, then Terra made, uh, or in my case, it was tool which is called TFR Sanitation, was going through these uh, files and it was uh, physically uh, doing or processing this information and putting it here for the user. So really, this information was up to date uh, every time. So when Terraform runs, then this information was already placed here. Instead of me pointing to something like globals or locals or variable, uh, it was actually able to do this uh, replacement here. And at some point, I was thinking that if you guys generate Terraform code, you can do the same mm -hmm. here. So I mean, can... one thing that is um, one thing that is on the uh, roadmap is cross access to globals um, of other stacks. Yeah, <clears throat> that's something that um, that is very similar to what you explained here with the um, uh, with the annotations. Um, mm -hmm. Also, in a sense that, of course, in the generated code, globals always uh, replace with the actual values. So we're doing that. Um, yeah. I don't have an ETA on that, so I need to check with the um, check back in with the team. But I know that it's in the immediate um, kind of future. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, right. Uh, that would be helpful. And again, uh, I understand the point of generating valid uh, Terraform code. Uh, it's it's very good, uh, though I'm not sure if if this line is necessary or not. Should I commit my TF files or not? Mm -hmm. What's your opinion on that? Yeah, you should definitely commit your TF files. I mean, the the there there's <coughs> there's two different ways um and i think most of the times i see people using terramate generate locally to generate code to check it in then to the repository which is also it's you cannot do a, you cannot conduct a pull request review based on non generated code okay and let's assume that you have some some sort of bugs or so, yeah, you introduce some bugs or uh, uh, yeah, whatever, whatever misconfiguration in your TerraMate code. So now if you do not review the generated um, files in Terraform, there may be destructive changes to your infrastructure. So that's, that's total nonsense. So yeah. um, we always encourage, we always encourage our users to use the code generation locally, check in the code, hence the safeguards. Yeah? So what you described earlier on in this call as it failed, those are safeguards because an infrastructure as code safeguards are actually super important. Uh, mm -hmm. um, you want to make sure that um, whenever you execute a command in uh, in, a, in, a, in a stack that, hey, the code um, that I have here is actually checked in and I'm aware of that or there's any changes or the code is outdated. Yeah? Hence the generated code is outdated, which um, may introduce a change to infrastructure that you do not want. Um, so yes, recommended workflow is to check in generated code um, we quite often see people running this as um, a sanity check in GitHub Actions or whatnot, just to check whether the code is actually has actually been checked in and it is um, it is current. Um, um, yeah, but it can also be generated in the pipeline and added to a pull request, of course, which I don't think is an optimal workflow, but it's possible. Yeah. Well, I kind of uh, uh, see the point what you are making here, but at the same time. A reviewing code which is far from what I would write myself because uh, well it's a different order and there are no comments I mean in my code I may include some comments because I may explain mm -hmm. some things uh, it mm -hmm. reminds me that uh, I would be reviewing compiled code really that's uh, yeah that's not what I want to review I mean yeah I, yeah, it will work, but it's uh, yeah. Yeah, I think we're I think we're adding functionality in order to um 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 in, in order to con converse the order here. Um, right now this is um I think it was mentioned earlier in this call basic uh, um, alphabetic um ordering based on what the the HashiCorp HCL path is doing. So we're working around this to come up with a more you know sort of well-known structure with like source and then all the the attributes or whatnot. Um, <clears throat> comments are filtered. Yes, it's also something that um, I, um, I I believe we've received multiple times where we look at ways how to do that. Um, essentially, the decision is, um, I can be transparent here, the HCL parser uh, library is pretty limited in what it can do. And um, we will basically um, um, yeah, come up with a custom implementation. 
um, potentially in order to work around this. I mean, a good as many implementations even in Rust for HCL, um, but it's a hard programming uh, problem to solve. The other thing that I want to mention is yes, of course, it's meant to be for reviewability, but also for static code analysis. Yeah? So whether you do mm -hmm. vulnerability, threat detection, cost prediction, whatnot, this is all done on the generated code, not on the TerraMate code, right? Because most of those toolings, they do not know about TerraMate specific syntax, right? So it yeah. definitely makes sense to check it into the repository. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, that uh, running all of the tooling uh, on top of uh, generated code makes perfect sense. Right. Okay. Well, I don't think I run. Did I run any code today? Let's see if I run plan. It says generated. Did I do any changes? Yeah, I did some. Uh, let me run this again. I just want to run plan and see how it works. And it says, so the plan uh, comment here was not really so useful because uh, again, it's uh, standard output from Terraform, uh, you may uh, provide some other ways of uh, uh, showing this uh, code maybe in more compact way. Uh, but if I run this command like apply, mm, this is something what I was uh, missing and maybe uh, I just didn't uh, find it. What are the ways to run uh, or to confirm uh, stacks, uh, like all of them at once, uh, because now, now there are no uh, ways for me to, uh, um, well, there is a way, sorry, what I'm saying is just nonsense. Uh, there is a way for me to say, uh, what is it, auto, what is it, auto approve or something, right? Auto approve, uh, I think, yeah. Yeah, and if you think about it, and if you think about it for a second, and uh, we come back to the point that uh, Terramid is not a wrapper for Terraform, then uh, you'll actually come up with the conclusion that you can invoke whatever command here. So you cannot just, you know, override um, uh, Terraform specifics on the on the CLI here, right? We could invoke Terraform, kubectl, etc. But Terramid does not come on the CLI level with any Terraform specific, um, yeah, addition here. Yeah, I, I was more thinking about. Uh, running uh, TerraMate, uh, but uh, in a little bit more uh, controlled way, so that uh, if I run Terraform apply, uh, it will run across all stacks. But uh, then I just realized that, of course, there is a way for me to see all of my stacks. Uh, TerraMate, <laughs> TerraMate list, and I can run uh, Terraform commands specific on specific stacks, right? That's, yeah, uh, you can, for example, yeah, you, for example, with uh, a TerraMate uh, minus C or change dial, you can just um, directly set the working directory for to a specific um, directory that contains either one stack or multiple stacks. Um, you can, um, with TerraMate, run um, filter based on text, or you mm -hmm. can append a change argument to only take um, um, to only take um, um, stacks that actually contain changes, or combine both yeah. even. Uh, so yeah, you can you can narrow this down um, um, very much, but of course the orchestration orchestration is meant to apply patterns, right? So either you you specify and execute commands in a single stack, or on a specific range of stacks, or on all stacks. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. That's. Uh, so let me just run apply. Uh, see that it works. Well, it should work because I didn't do any anything bad. Uh, so it created one stack in dev, and it created one more stack in prod, and that's it. And now I have a lot of different uh, buckets, and everything looks good. Well, going back to <laughs> to this uh, to the uh, uh, to, to the point, like you said. Terramate has uh, a lot of other features, and we uh, are covering one which is maybe not the most exciting one, right? Uh, I mean, what other features uh, do you think uh, worth 
mentioning or do you want people to uh, to read more about them or uh, keep in mind that you guys are working on them yeah that makes um that makes total sense um so i think we specifically talked about the code generation code generation patterns a lot in this call um but i think the orchestration and essentially how to build infrastructure using stacks is something where most of the value is i mean essentially it's all around you know all built around stacks so um there is an unlimited hierarchy of nested stacks possible in Terramate and you know how those how those execute per default how then the explicitly set um, um orchestration and can help you to uh, manage dependencies etc those are all features um that are great yeah i think the change detection is something that is super important for many teams as in most of the toolings um does not exist i i i know that atlantis has um has something um similar which is also atlantis is a great tool after all um both work handy um very well together and um what we're building next and i think um that's going to be pretty cool as well as you know actionable insights and observability in stacks so things such as um drift detections for stacks and you know really understanding what's going on in stack what kind of resources are managed here etc um is something that we're proactively um I'm working on this will come um later this year but yeah it's a lot of stuff that you can do with um with terramate um for example upcoming now is um interpolation in terramate commands yeah uh, um on even on a cli level which is pretty um pretty helpful and it just yeah i guess helps working around a lot of the shortcomings yeah um most of the most of the companies that we see using Terramate, they either use Terramate to optimize their code and they use the code generation, which are then, you know, executed in Terraform Cloud or whatnot. Um, or they use Terramate and GitHub Actions to also plan and apply uh, Terraform changes or whatever other command. And um, it's not as feature complete. Um, it's not It's not feature complete to Atlantis yet. Um, but um, we're adding many things that may be helpful to run it in automation. Uh, um, and we already see quite a lot of people, um, um, quite a lot of people doing that. Uh, so it's a really neat tool, I guess, for, for multi ISC kind of management, while at the moment we focus on Terraform from a marketing point of view, yeah. Right. Well, yeah, honestly, uh, I believe, and I really want that uh, Terraform uh, implement pretty much all of these features by Terramate right away. And I've been uh, telling and promoting this functionality for quite some time myself. Uh, most of us uh, want to have flexibility when we work with Terraform, but unfortunately, uh, in most cases, we're still dealing with Terraform as in prehistoric age, where we just have a bunch of files laying around, updating them the way we want uh, without any uh, clear uh, kind of <laughs> clear uh, path what we are going to do. So this kind of tools uh, are absolutely necessary. And as you say, code generation is one thing, but uh, uh, the way uh, you guys are implementing integration with uh, version control system is absolutely great and this is the way to go i didn't show it uh, in details here but uh, i know that it's it's in the right direction that's for sure cool uh well um do we have other questions or points by anyone feel free to write your questions in chat maybe we will mention them um if not um do you want to say something to conclude this uh, uh this episode Soren? yeah um thank you guys so much for tuning in it was fun um if you want to learn more about terramate uh, we have a discord community server at terramate.io slash discord where you can ask frequent questions and stuff i'm more than happy to you know, discuss um, what I was missing from a user um, community point of view. So yeah, thanks for tuning in. It was good fun. Yeah, and also this play terramate.io is pretty easy way to 
uh, to see how things are working. Um, you don't have to, uh, yeah, to install Terramate right away to see uh, what kind of things are there. And, and yeah, I like it very much. I like this playground very much usually. Cool. Okay, thanks everyone for finding time and joining. And uh, thank you, Soren, very much for accepting the challenge. <laughs> That's thank good. you, Anton. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.